Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to introduce a very useful tool that I personally use it for SIP troubleshooting. It can be also a very interesting tool if you want to get familiar with SIP packets. If you are a telephony administrator or you have run your own IPvBX using Astri space solutions such as FreePvX or Isabel or maybe FreeSwitch or if you have run your own SIP proxy using open source or Camellio you should get familiar with this tool. SNGREP is a tool for displaying SIP message flows in terminal. Also, you can capture SIP packets and save in PCAP files that can be used in SNGREP or some other famous tools such as TC Blump or Wireshark. Let's get started and see how we can use this useful tool in action. Let's install SNGREP on our Linux machine. I'm using the compiling source code method, but you can use your package manager like apt-get or yum to install SNGREP as well. In order to install SNGREP from source code, go to the github.com and search for the SNGREP. Select the first link, irontech slash SNGREP. Click on the code and copy the code pass. Now open your terminal, cd to usr local src, and clone the code. Git clone, and the path that we have copied. It will clone the code or copy the code in your system. Enter the folder. Run the bootstrap command, dot s slash bootstrap dot sh. Run the configure command. Okay, so all prerequisites are there. And compile. By running the command make. And install by running the command make install. So the sngrep command is installed from source code. If you run sngrep, you are able to log into the sngrep console. Okay, so let's run the SNGREP again. SNGREP. Log into the console and let's simulate a SIP flow. In order to do that, I have installed Asterisk on the same box and I'm using the Zoiper soft one to register my extension into my Asterisk. I have already created a SIP extension 6001 uh, and I want to register and see how I can capture the SIP packets is the in SNGREP. Let's start 6001 at my IP address of the SIP server and I will enter the correct username and password here. I click login and as you can see the SIP is registering and I'm receiving the register packets. Let's select it, enter and you can see all the SIP flows here. This is my, the IP address of my computer that I have installed the Zoiper software on it. And this is my SIP server on port 5060, the standard SIP port. You can see the register packets comes from my computer to the uh, SIP server. The SIP server, of course, this is the normal uh, flow for the SIP registration, sends an uh, unauthorized packets to my uh, Zoiper and requests for the password. Uh, my soft phone replies back with the username and password, and of course, because the username and passwords uh, are correct, so it will register. So in one view, you can uh, see the SIP flow. What is the usage of this? Uh, for example, you have a user uh, in another, in a remote location, and they cannot register. Usually users are not technical, so they, they will tell you, I cannot register my phone. You can check, first of all, if you are receiving any SIP packets from that remote location or from their IP address or not. Because if you are not receiving any SIP packets, definitely the problem is not your PBX. And there is something in the middle that blocks the SIP packets, maybe your firewall, or maybe a SIP filtering is on the way. So you know that, okay, the problem is not your PBX and is in the network and you know where to look and solve it or maybe their user and password are not correct. So how can, you, how can you understand? Let's simulate the same. If I click escape, 
I will go back to the main window. Let's not register it. Let's this time enter a wrong password and click login and we try to register. Again, we are receiving the register packet, but let's explore. This time, the soft phone sends the register packet. Of course, the PBX as a normal method, it will reply back with the unauthorized to ask for the password. Again, the Zoiper provide the password, but the password is wrong. So PBX again sends an authorized message instead of OK message. So you will and now you have a clear view and clear understanding of uh, an unsuccessful registration because of the password. So by simulating different scenarios, you are getting familiar with C packets and that will help troubleshooting a lot. We have uh, multiple features here as well. For example, if I uh, escape here, I want to compare these two. So I can just select them by a space and then click enter. Then you can see I have both register packets in one view and I can compare them. And of course you can scroll down or scroll up and see the details of the C packets here as well. Um, the other uh, tools that you have, you can save in a PCAP file or uh, you can search. Let me go to the main window. Let's register back again with the correct password. And after registration, we get other methods as well, like subscribe, for example, for voicemail. Um, but sometimes we are receiving a lot of packets and you want to search based on the IP address of the uh, source or base of, uh, based on a specific method. So you can click F3. Here is F3. And you can search, for example, you just want the register packets. And it will just show you all the register packets. It doesn't show you the, any other packets that you have. Or you can search based on the IP address. And uh, yes, or you can save it by pressing F2. It will save in a PCAP file the packets that you have selected. And then you can send to the provider. Usually it's useful for SIP registration troubleshooting. Sometimes you want to register a trunk, but it's not registering, or you are the trunk provider and a customer wants to register to you. So you can uh, capture the file and send to them and prove to them that, okay, the problem is not from your, yours, uh, your system, or um, they're not entering credentials correctly. So you can save a pickup file and send to them. They can open it in a Wireshark or TCP dump, or if they have SNG rep, they can open it uh, and see the captures. My intention for this video was more to introduce this video. There are a lot of good videos in the YouTube that you can search. They explain about different scenarios uh, because here in this tool, we have call states as well. So if you register two phones and if you do a call, then you will see the live status of the call. Also, you can troubleshoot the STP packets. Uh, as you can see here, uh, if we enter a packet, the F2, you can show the STP packets as well. Of course, we don't have any STP packets right now because we don't have any call, but they are all the, uh, or RTP packets, but they are all the tools that you can work with them, you can test them and use in your own troubleshooting. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you find this video useful, please uh, consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you, goodbye.